A reading from the book of Genesis. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fertile and multiply and fill the earth. Dread fear of you shall come upon all the animals of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon all the creatures that move about on the ground and all the fishes of the sea. Into your power they are delivered. Every creature that is alive shall be yours to eat. I give them all to you as I did the green plants. Only flesh with its lifeblood still in it you shall not eat. For your own lifeblood, too, I will demand an accounting. From every animal I will demand it, and from one man in regard to his fellow man I will demand an accounting for human life. If anyone sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God he has been made. Be fertile then and multiply, abound on earth and subdue it. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. The word of the Lord. From heaven, the Lord looks down on the earth. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory when the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let this his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. The children of your servants shall abide, and their posterity shall continue in your presence, that the name of the Lord may be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem, when the peoples gather together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly, 
Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking, not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. Important questions in our gospel today. Who do people say that I am? Through these 2,000 years of history, many have answered that question in many different ways. Everything from Jesus never existed all the way through the spectrum to he is God. But perhaps the most important question of all is when that question is directed at ourselves. Who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus in our lives? It's an important question and we probably should ask ourselves that each day. We presumably will say, well, we believe he's Jesus. He's the Son of God who came into this world 2,000 years ago, who suffered and died on the cross, rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, These are all facts, knowledge. But who do we really say that he is? Have we really allowed Jesus to penetrate the barrier of our life? You know, as human beings, we're very cautious as to who we really let into our hearts. Family, intimate and close friends, as we walk through this life, but when we really think about it, it's really only a handful of people that we really let into our lives in a relationship that's close and abiding. As we well know, even in families, families and friends can come and go in our lives, depending upon the the winds of life around us, circumstances. But what about Jesus? Have we really let him into our lives. We remind ourselves each day to open that doorway of our hearts. And I guess really what it ultimately is all about is do we really trust in him? Because trust is that most important element of all of our faith and our hope and ultimately our loving. Do we trust that Jesus is my Lord and Savior? that he is my most intimate friend, my closest friend? Do I speak to him every day as if he is my, my lover, the greatest person of my life? Jesus indeed is our savior, yes. We know that, but we must now not only believe it, but live it as we let him in more and more each day. Confident in the compassion of our Heavenly Father, we now turn to him with our petitions that all members of the church may boldly proclaim that Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That leaders of nations experiencing conflict may work tirelessly to alleviate ethnic and religious tensions and encourage respect for one another. Let us pray to the Lord that all victims of violence and terrorism, especially refugees and children, may find comfort and healing in our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who suffer from mental or physical illness may experience our prayerful support and find healing and strength through the care of medical professionals. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for our beloved dead, Especially let us remember in this Mass, Mrs. Margie Leiniger, and the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Anthony Jekyll, for all our loved ones, especially those who will die alone today. May they see the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Heavenly Father, you established a covenant with Noah and his descendants, set a rainbow in the sky as a sign of your promise. Help us always to be mindful of your great love for us. Trust that you will answer our petitions according to your holy will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>